You could take them all at that time and put them in a phone booth and have room left over. <laughs> and he had the temerity to tell me he was going to run for the state senate. Well, I counseled him, wished him well, and thought that would be the end of Chick Hecht. That was the beginning of my underestimating Chick Hecht. Before we knew it, he was all over Clark. Thank you for those wonderful remarks. Although I was standing outside, the president and I enjoyed every moment of it. <laughs> I value your friendship very, very much and your loyal dedication to our great state of Nevada and to the United States of America. Mr. President, I'm a businessman. And in business, <clears throat> excuse me, we always say what the bottom line is. Your administration has done so much to improve the economy of America. A strong defense, the defense, SDI, Strategic Defense Initiative, and you have saved Social Security. I am proud to be a part of your accomplishments. Mr. President, I want to thank all these people out here for all the work they did and the tremendous, tremendous efforts on so many people I was just told out in the hall that we will exceed over 400,000 tonight and quite possibly with our pledges, 500,000. <clears throat> Again, my thanks to all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to be here and to see one of my oldest and truest friends, a former senator and a former governor, but always a current statesman, Paul Laxalt. For both both Paul and me, one of the highest priorities of this election year is to make sure that another old and true friend stays where he belongs in the United States Senate. And of course, I'm talking about Senator Chick Hecht. Now, we're all together on that, and that's why we're here. And don't think I'm not aware of and don't appreciate what each of you is doing to help Chick. And I just heard this evidence of what you've done. Well, I am and I do. Uh, Chick is going to have a tough race. We all know that. But he's a scrapper. Time and again, his opponents, as well as the press, have underestimated him, given him up for goners, only to see him out ahead of the pack on Election Day. This year, they've been writing him off again. As you were told, you didn't know you were using a couple of my lines. <laughs> he was 30 point, 31 points down in the poll just a while back, and that didn't phase Chick. And just as he's got to work, announced the opposition that's sweating. And he's narrowed that gap, as you've been told, to just seven points, and he's closing fast. That's the kind of spirit I like. Reminds me of reading a poll about another candidate in January 1980. It was, it was taken at a National Press Club luncheon here in Washington on the eve of the primary season. Those in attendance were asked who would be the next president of the United States. Jimmy Carter got a large number of votes, and so did Teddy Kennedy. There was one candidate on the Republican side who got so few votes from the wise men of Washington that it wasn't even reported in the lineup. Like Chick, I've had a career of being underestimated. <laughs> Started a number of years back. I was under contract to Warner Brothers Studio. 
And when I announced that I was running for governor, and somebody told Jack Warner that, Jack thought a moment and he said, no, uh-uh. Jimmy Stewart for governor, Reagan for best friend. <laughs> so I have a hunch that being underestimated will turn out to be Chick's secret weapon. Chick's going to be reelected because he stands for the kind of principles Nevada wants and America needs. Represented the principles that brought so many of us here to Washington seven years ago and brought Chick to join us two years later. Through three Congresses, Chick and I have worked together for lower tax rates and tax reform, for strong measures like Graham Rudman to put a collar on congressional spending, for a strategic defense against ballistic missiles, for judges and justices who would return the tradition of judicial restraint to the American judiciary, for a strong defense, and to support those brave souls fighting for freedom in our hemisphere and around the world. But we began working side by side long before Chick came here to Washington. Chick joined with me in three presidential campaigns spanning two decades to bring our principles here to Washington. And once he made it here himself, he stood with me more often than all but a handful of senators, as Paul has told you. Yes, we believe in the same things for which I'm grateful. I sure wouldn't want to fight against Chick Heck too often. He's got a stubborn independent streak. He's the kind of senator who doesn't make a lot of noise. He just gets things done for Nevada and the nation. And more often than not, he comes out on top. Nevada may be the silver state, but Chick Hecht has gone for the gold medal among senators, and so far as I'm concerned, he's won it. Now, I'd like to turn to a matter that shows just how critical it is to put Chick and men and women like him in the next Congress. I'm talking about Central America and the situation in Nicaragua. Last week's Sandinista attack on Honduras was greeted by too many in Congress, not as the proof that funding the freedom fighters is the one way, the only way, to get the Sandinistas to the peace table and keep them there. No, one senator spoke for too many when he shook his head about the political mistake of those in Managua, as if they'd stumbled in some primary or caucus. Well, maybe if these critics thought for a moment, they'd just see what the nature of this so-called mistake really was. Troop movements, small team reconnaissance missions, the position of positioning of fuel and supplies, in short, the logistical preparations for the incursion began just after Congress voted to reject our package of aid to the democratic resistance. We saw it happening. This was a precise and carefully prepared operation that showed the influence of outside advisors and must have required several weeks to plan. It was not some spontaneous Sunday afternoon outing. In other words, counting back to when we first saw logistical preparations commence, and before that to when planning would have had to start, this invasion was beginning or underway, even as in late February, a group of liberal House Democrats sent a letter to anti-aid lobbyists saying that in their words, quote, nothing will bring peace faster than destroying contra hopes for more military aid, end quote. This was the same period in which we were warning that an end to congressional aid would set back, not advance, the cause of peace and democracy in Nicaragua. Preparations for the incursion were continuing when Sandinista mobs were breaking up peaceful demonstrations in Managua, something they'd eased off on as the congressional vote on aid to the freedom fighters approached. But this time, their attack showed a savagery that had rarely been displayed before, as thugs pounded demonstrators with clubs and metal bars. And believe me, they did not just do this to their fellow men. They did it to groups of women and ladies who were simply walking in the streets and protesting various things the Sandinistas were doing. The stage for the attack was set even before Daniel Ortega fired the peace mediator, Cardinal Obando y Bravo, and boasted he was going to crush the Contras. Well, now we know he had reason to believe he could. The attack he knew was approaching involved multiple combat battalions, thousands of troops, and the close support of M-117s and Mi-25 attack helicopters, Soviet craft. 
the, were the signs of danger ever clearer. Yet throughout this time, our critics were saying over and over that only by stopping aid would we give the peace process a chance. I'm not questioning the sincerity of our critics, only their judgment. And I'm saying that we need, America needs, more men and women on both sides of Capitol Hill with the good judgment of Chick Hecht. He's understood what's been going on in Central America from the first. And as on so many matters, I've always found him to have a cool, clear head. And I know that others have recognized these qualities in Chick as well. He's been endorsed by the Chamber of Commerce, and I understand that he just received the coveted Watchdog of the Treasury Award. You know, he told you he was a businessman, and he is. And you know, principles of the kind that are just commonplace out in the private sector and in the business world are still in great need in our nation's capital. I like to tell a little story about a community that decided they were going to raise their signal signs or traffic signs and uh, street signs and so forth from only being five feet high to seven feet high so they would be more visible to drivers in automobiles. And the federal government came in and said, oh, we have a plan. We'll do that for you. We'll lower the streets two feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. America, America needs Chick Hecht. And sincerely, I hope the next president of the, will be a Republican and that he'll need him too. So I know what you're going to do, and thank you, and God bless you. A young man from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, just before we came in, presented me with this, my name on it. It's for those running rebels. And, uh, and I'm going to take it home with me. <laughs> All right. You'll have to get your name. <laughs>